guys! So today I wanted to show you guys a little video about what a typical day of a digital nomad is like here in Tulum. So I'm going to bring you guys with me on the journey from waking up, making breakfast, doing some work and whatever else I end up doing today and I'm going to show you what a typical day is like for me while living here in Mexico. So let's get started. I usually start my day here in Tulum by making a berry smoothie, adding some granola that I've bought from the local supermarket, Shadrawi, and then I head out to my balcony, chill out for about half an hour and enjoy my breakfast in the morning sunshine. So a lot of the time I'll just sit here in the apartment and work for maybe two or three hours. I would love to say half the day or the whole day, but it's just not true. I never normally work past lunchtime, I would say. And then I either go to the beach in Tulum or I go to a cenote, meet up with friends, maybe go out for lunch, anything at all. Maybe I'll just go up to my rooftop pool and chill out and read a book. But in the morning, I will do as much work as possible. And sometimes the internet here isn't very good in the apartment, even though we were told it would be. And in that case, I will go out to a cafe or a co-working space in Tulum, which I will show you later if the internet isn't that good here. Okay, slight change of plans, which is kind of normal here because I never actually really have plans for the day. But two of my friends just messaged me and they are down at one of the beach clubs on the beach road in the hotel zone. So they are at Le Zebra and it's actually a beach club I've never been to before. So I decided to stop all my work, stop what I was doing, jumped in the shower, changed my clothes and now I'm going to jump on my scooter and head to Le Zebra. Now I heard there's still a little bit of flooding on the road so hopefully I can get through safely enough. So next stop, Le Zebra. Okay, so today I wanted to get a cheap lunch before heading to the beach, although it just started raining. Um, so I've just come to one of these small little uh, street food taco stands, right by a supermarket actually. This one's doing tortas, that one is doing tacos, and they're super cheap. Okay, so even though there's a lot of fancy restaurants here in Tulum, like even in Tulum town, and definitely along the beach road, some of the best food you're gonna get here is from the street stands, and they have so many different choices, like, Say if you were ordering chicken tacos, it could be like chicken fajita tacos, or it could be chicken chipotle, or it could be chicken with jalapenos. So they have a lot of different ways that they cook it, a lot of different choices. So pork, beef, chicken, and then loads of different ways that they cook it. All for about 15 pesos or 30 pesos, so between 1 and 2 euro. So this is the finished torta. I've just covered it in all these different sauces. Okay, so after some pretty crazy traffic on the beach road, because like the whole road was flooded, I finally made it here to La Zebra. So, just walking in now, because these are all their little private cabanas. in the middle I think. Should I push you or something? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is La Zebra and they have these cool sort of boats that you can sit inside. You can see a lot of people are just sitting in these boats. They have giant Jenga. After a few hours on the beach, me and my friends decided to check out Gran Cenote, which is one of the most famous cenotes here, located just outside of Tulum. 
They say it's best to get here quite early in the morning, so when we got here in the afternoon it was actually quite busy, but as you can see from these videos, it wasn't too busy, and we were pretty excited to see that there was turtles in the water, and you could get in and swim with them. Look at these showers! They're so cool! Look at this! So fun! Oh my god, I love it! <laughs> Alright, let's do this. Oh. oh, it's cold. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so we lost power in my house, so I don't have um, water. So this is probably the only shower I'm going to get today. <laughs> Once we had showered and cleaned off any sort of excess sunscreen or body lotion we were wearing, we headed over to Gran Cenote, where we couldn't believe how clear the water was. There was turtles everywhere and the water was just as clear above as it was below. I definitely recommend bringing a snorkel as if you don't you're going to miss out on the magic of this incredible cenote. Even though it's dark above the water when you're swimming through the cave, when you put the GoPro under the water, it suddenly got much brighter and you could see everything. The water was so clear. It was like when you wave your hands on the water, it's almost like bioluminescence. spending over two hours swimming around Gran Cenote, diving down to the bottom, exploring the various caves, checking out the hundreds of turtles that were swimming alongside us, and we couldn't get over the amount of life that was to be seen under the water, including hundreds if not thousands of fish. After about an hour or two chilling out in the cenote, we decided to jump back on my scooter and head back to town before it got dark. So after a pretty fun day at the cenote, we were driving back into Tulum and my bike, my new scooter, which I purchased a few days ago, only four days ago, it was starting to wobble and it was really, really wobbling quite a lot and I was getting quite scared. I was like, this isn't right, something's wrong. So Nicole was on the back, I was like, stop, stop, you need to get off. And then we got back on, we went a little bit further and it was wobbling even more. And then I stopped and I looked and I realized like the whole back tire was totally flat. It was like a, quite a big puncture. There was even like a cut in the tire. So we don't really know when it happened. I guess I must have gone over some sort of bump or some sort of rocks or through some sort of potholes because there's a lot of pot potholes here in Tulum. But anyway, we, we managed to get the scooter off the road and to the side of the road and we called the mechanic. He told us like two hours ago that he would be here in 30 minutes. And then after about an hour, he sends me a WhatsApp saying, oh, I'm at the doctor, like, <laughs> I'm at the doctor, but I can be there in 40 minutes. This is like, you know, an hour later. And here I am, my friend already got a taxi home. I told her just to go. There's no point in us both waiting here. Just waiting here with my scooter. He keeps inc increasing the price. First it was 400. Now he's saying it's 1,700, which is like 70 euro, like $80. Um, and my phone is now dead. My phone battery has died. So I just told him, this is where I am. Please come and rescue me. Because I'm literally on the side of a main road here, just outside of Tulum. And it's getting dark, as you can probably see. So what started as a pretty fun day involving beach and street food and cenote days ended up as a little bit of a disaster. In total, I ended up waiting three hours for a local mechanic to come out and change my tire of which I feel I got overcharged, but that is debatable. Um, when he came, he seemed to struggle a lot with actually changing the tire. And by the time I left, it was already getting dark, if not already dark.
Okay, so the good news is that the mechanic finally arrived. So after like two hours, the mechanic arrived and I think they're finally fixing the tire on my bike. So I can finally go home. So as you can probably see, you never really know how your day will turn out here in Tulum as a digital nomad. Uh, if you decide to stay in your apartment and work all day, you're probably going to have less fun, but maybe be more productive and have less drama. Otherwise, if you head out to the beach or a cenote day, or if you have the scooter and decide to drive that around town, you never really know what type of adventures you're going to have.